Greetings, salutations, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and welcome to Victory Center Ministries and those joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube, praise the Lord. Here in the Word of God, it says, I will sing of the mercy and the judgment of the Lord. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing, and I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when thou wilt come unto me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody open up a prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity for us all to gather together and uh, hear your word, Lord, be in your presence, Lord God. And I would just ask that you would bless each and every one that is here on their way and watch online, Lord God, and bless our pastor as he shares in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. All right, we're going to join and sing. Um, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and with the... Uh, accompaniment of my wife on uh, uh, a CD was made, so praise God. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I will let her
Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We praise you, we bless you. We acknowledge you, Lord, as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You are our God. You're the everlasting one. You're the lovely one. You're the Prince of Peace, you're your soon coming king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, one of, one of the wonderful things about praise, praising the Lord, um, we don't have to wait to come to church to praise the Lord. Amen. We can praise the Lord anywhere, any place. Anytime, praise God. I was um uh on one day I was at at court. I've been called to um uh, for jury duty, and I was praising the Lord anyway. <laughs> praise God. Um, I was on um, another time I was in traffic court. I was praising the Lord anyway. Praise God. Uh, fighting a ticket that I got. Praise the Lord anyway. Um, no matter what, you can praise God. And anywhere and everywhere, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Um, and and whether anybody else knows you're praising God is immaterial, but you praise God anyway. It's just um, as you have a heart that's open to God, a heart that's yielded to God, for Him to guide and direct and bless and fulfill His will in your life in Jesus' name. So just keep praising God, just keep praising God. Um, when uh, thank. It, uh, and um, yeah, it was 3:21. Um, all of a sudden, I woke up and uh, somebody's uh, name came to me, and so I just started praying for that person. It was like 3:21 in the morning. This, this morning, I'm praying, and then I'm just praising God and praising God and praying. And then uh, at some point, I went back to sleep, but praise, I went back to sleep praising God, Amen. praising God. I was interceding for somebody, but I went back to sleep praising God. Hallelujah. So, see, when, when something comes up, praise God. Anyway, something comes up, look to God, call upon God, trust in God, and believe in God. God's with you. God's hand is upon you. Um, God loves you. And you know what? He loves hearing from you. Yes. yes. Hello. He really yes. loves hearing from you. So keep talking to him. Praise God. Day and night. Praise God. Let, let, the, <coughs> let that praise come forth. Let it just continue. As you reach out in faith and reach out in assurance and knowing that God is with you and God's hand will be 
what's needed and necessary in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. And um, and then um, this morning, too, it's in uh, Pastor Amos. Uh, love you. God bless you, Pastor Amos, and uh, everybody from the church, and greetings from, from Victory Center Ministries to you and your, your family, um, and your wife and children, and the church. And God bless you. And looking forward to being there with you here in a here in like 10 days, praise mm. God, uh, that you're going to uh, be blessed by this. And, and then as we just continue in the Lord. Uh, so as we go to the Lord for prayer, um, praying for uh, Pastor Amos' wife, uh, Lynette, um, this coming, uh, this next week, uh, she'll be finishing her medication and then she's got to go back to the to the hospital. It's a five-hour drive from to go there. So I just pray that it all go well there. Uh, and there has been improvement, and as she is improving, praise God, that there will be continuing. When the doctor can say, hey, you are so much improved, praise God, so that there's no more discomfort or pain there in Jesus' name. So keep them in prayer. And also pray, uh, I was in contact with um, with uh, Pastor John, who is the uh, pastor of the Assembly of God in um, Kenya, in, in Kissy. Um, and so with, with that, um, and so he invited me to come. He wanted me to come and be there for a week. I said, no, I can't be there for a week. I'll be there three or four days, but then could be at Pastor Amos' church. Because that's my whole focus of being there. Um, so he's so grateful that I'll be there for three days. And so he's inviting um, people so that they would make it the announcement uh, today. Because I'll be there, um, arrive there. Uh, I leave here on the 17th to the bulletin, and then I'll be there on the 19th. Um, so I'll be there on uh, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So praise God. Uh, so he's got uh, people that he's going to bring in there and have a, uh, because of me being there as a guest speaker, then they're going to have a special meal so people will come because some are going to be walking a long ways just to even get to church. Um, so we're going to have a, a long session there so they can have a, so they'll, uh, they'll speak, have something to eat, and then get to speak again. So I'll just keep that in prayer and that ministry there. And then Pastor John said, he says, that your impact and influence is already having an effect in Kenya. Praise oh, God. God. Um, I've had three other pastors now call me and one's a bishop and wanted to call call me to uh, to, to share it's like praise God and Pastor Amos said that that he's had, had a, it's been around ten or twelve people that have come to the church since I was there. Um, and the church is growing, the church is developing, praise God. So just continue to keep the church there in prayer and the ministry there with Pastor Amos. And just a dear um, dear man of God and again my adopted son. Uh, so I, he gets special favor from me, he gets special privilege from me. So I just keep him in prayer too, and that the Lord will just continue to minister him and his men that are there, that God will fulfill what's needed and necessary. And then, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned last week, pray, there's two ladies by the name of Margarita. One is Australia, and one is in Mexico City. So pray for both of them. They're both going through some. Some challenges. Uh, the enemy trying to hinder them and uh, defeat them, but it is knowing this that God is the one to make a way and meet the need in Jesus' name. And again, as I in the bulletin have uh, asked for a special prayer for me um, for the ministry and what God's called me to do and what I'm doing. Praise God. Um, it's like the doors that the Lord is opening up is just. I mean, here we are. This little church here that's having an influence in Australia and also in um, in Kenya. So praise God. So God is reaching out in a special way, and this church is doing something in a very special way. So praise God. So Aaron is here. Aaron comes to continue leading the rest of the prayer requests. So those are ones I want to get off right off the bat and just to continue um, with these individuals. That God's power, spirit, and might will manifest in all that's needed and necessary. And then, as we will come and we'll take prayer requests, local prayer requests as well. Um, we're to pray, pray for everybody. 
pray for the world, we pray for everybody around about us, uh, and to believe God to meet the ministry. And then um, and pray for Russ's daughter, to uh, Megan, who um, uh, sent out an SOS to her father. <laughs> she's in distress, and so she's even open for prayer. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so, so praise God. And this God minister here. So I heard come to you being in the rest of her request. And praise God for that. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, a little uh, praise report. Uh, so, when I went in for my post op for my eye, uh, they said, uh, you know, this was Thursday, they said, even though it's only been a week, they said it's it's healing up a lot faster than they anticipated. Hallelujah. So, praise God. Um, I'm already to the point to where I can drive and pop my patch on. Uh, the images have merged together for the most part. There's still some angles where I get double vision, but I mean, it's so much better. Uh, so I'm very thankful for all the prayers. Um, obviously, it's working. So that's uh, really cool. Um, let's see. Other than that, uh, I don't have any prayer requests that come to mind other than for the ministry. Um, have the have the ministry expand, uh, be booming, reaching more and more people. Um, and uh, as I stand in for the Wednesday nights while you're gone, uh, pray for me uh, that um, the Word of God will uh, you know, continue to come to me and flow. And uh, you know, and God's Word is uh, God's Word is all I want to come out of my mouth. So you know, um, that's my prayer every single time is that um, I say nothing of myself. Uh, nothing that I can logically think of. I don't. All I want is for God to speak. So, uh, that's, that's what I want. Um, other than that, uh, any other prayer requests? I love oh, I love praise reports. I just want to thank the Lord for um, continuing to hear uh, heal my sinuses. Oh yes. yes. Amen. Beautiful. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, for me and my family. Yeah. Um, yeah, for peace. And just, uh, just peace. Yeah. And uh, understanding with one another. We're all pretty much up together. So it's, yeah. it's very stressful at times. Yeah, it can yeah. be, for sure. Um, uh, uh, progress uh, on. Uh, uh, Debbie and her mother. Yeah, Debbie and her mom. Yeah. Too. Debbie and her mother, uh, oh, yeah. and yes. how's the progress on the uh, brain saving for the house? Uh, well, so far she's she signed up for Mishta. Maybe something like it's 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 Metro Wayne or something. Oh, yeah, but yep. it's I affiliated you. with the. Did you mention sure. that before? You yeah, mentioned that before. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, she. Uh, she called them. She has an appointment to go in. She has to take a class. Yep. Before they'll help her with the down payment, she has to take a class on learning what home ownership is about and different things. Yeah. So you pay $50 for that. <clears throat> I don't know how long the class is or anything like that. But Usually, um, I think it's usually like a day and then there's like a week's worth of study. Uh, they kind of do the same thing for like bankruptcy. Uh, yeah. They have to come through everything, make sure you understand yeah. the terms and how to handle it and all that. So, so she's got an appointment for that coming up. I don't know if it's the 17th or the 20th, something like that. So she's going to try to go that route because we're slow. We're sure. a little slower. We've been saving some money, but yeah, this will probably be a big help to her to learn things too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely keep uh, Brandy in prayer. Yes, thank you. So uh, she moves toward that. Yes, thank you. Very um, much. And for Dennis and her family. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Always good to have um, um God's uh, God's will and God's word and His peace and power be in, in your life and in your family and to help with and I guess reconcile, get everybody on the same page. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I just got a message from Eva. Let's see what it 
her friend Jackie is not doing good. She is almost getting ready to pass. That's what her dog, Jackie's daughter, told me. So she's kind of on her way to go see her. So let's keep Jackie in. Yeah. That's for cancer. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, for Jackie. Huh? Isn't that what she mentioned? Yes. She mentioned her. Okay. Yes, Russ? Lydia and yeah. Mark and Marlene. Okay. Lydia, Mark, and Okay. All right. Well, uh, several of you lay down on the bear. I'll be at these requests. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, we come before you. We know that you're the all-powerful, almighty God. Yes. We bow down before you yes. as we're here in preparation to getting down and falling before you in the heavenlies. Lord, may we all be found doing our Father's will when you will return. Lord, there's people that are asking for prayer. I can't remember all, everything that was said, peace in the home and financials, obligations yes. to be met. Lord, and Corey with his injury. Yes. Lord, Pastor Molnar, this who was a praise report that went out among the people of Africa. The influence of God is spreading there. And Lord, as we said prior to this, that behold, what a matter, a great matter, a little fire kindleth. Lord, you can set the whole continent of Africa on fire with the word of God with just one single man, just one single man one time preaching the word. Lord, we pray for this country. This country is going downhill before our eyes. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life, and I'm speaking for everybody in here. We've never seen anything like this. God, have mercy on your people. Yes. God, have mercy on the people that are called and chosen. Yes. Lord, that haven't come to you yet. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you, O Lord, when we're presented with whatever it is before us. Lead us into the right path, the path of blessing, not the path of cursing. Don't let us follow our own ways. Lead us and guide us and let us be willing to go your way. Amen. Just <coughs> We left the two uh, margaritas from Australia and New Mexico. She knew about that. That you'll uh, lead them, guide and direct, keep them strong, and keep their eyes focused on you no matter what um, comes their way to discourage them or to bring them down more. But we seek you with uh, all of our hearts, Lord, and uh, bring them your peace and uh, your comfort today. Continue to pray for Pastor Amos' wife, and that mm-hmm. we just pray for a total and complete uh, healing from this lung infection, Lord, in Jesus' name. For Ross's daughter, Megan, we just lift her uh, with four years old and grace today. Yes. And you her about the healing, deliverances, um, mm-hmm. the blessings that she needs in her life. <laughs> Most of all, we, we just thank you, Lord, because she has a uh, Agreed to have prayer or wants prayer. We thank you for that because that is definitely a step in the right direction. And Lord, I just pray that you'll know and we're prepared to bring them, Lord God, that she would just draw by your Holy Spirit and that she would just come back to you full force, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We also pray the same prayer for Lydia, Lord God, that she comes to know you with uh, all of her heart, too, Lord. Blessing on your salvation will be upon your third. And for Mark and Marlene too, Lord God. Yes. Bless and minister to their lives yes. with everything that's needed in Jesus' mighty name. Mm-hmm. We thank you for Aaron, Lord oh God. Yes. We just ask for a come continue to heal for his time. Lord mm-hmm. oh God, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray yes. that they will be told in a complete hand. We thank you so far, Lord, for just because you've heard all of our prayers and uh, 
for how good he's feeling already and how much his eye is getting better already. And we just give you praise for the rest of the year for the tool of how he feels. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Well, welcome to Victory Center Ministries, a church preparing you for a greater victory. And uh, one more, uh, one more piece of the uh, uh, praise report is uh, I haven't been kept up till three, four in the morning since the uh, eye surgery. So it worked. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, a church of praise and worship, spiritual teaching and preaching for victorious living and ministry for all. Uh, the week of March 31st through April 6th, 2024. Today is Mission Sunday. Remember, we need to continue to support our four adopted children in Kenya, Africa. We need a very generous offering today. At 10.45, we have Fellowship Coffee and Donuts, 11 a.m. Resurrection Sunday Victory Message, The Empty Tomb, Part 2, uh, 7 p.m. Wednesday, River of Life Bible Study, uh, going on Part 4 of Discipleship, 7 p.m. Thursday, 12-Step Recovery, 7 p.m. Friday Night Prayer Meeting at the Church, <clears throat> And then a happy birthday to Debbie, uh, April 9th. Let's believe the Lord for more miracles. <laughs> Dear church family, greetings, salutations, hallelujah, and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Please continue to pray for strength and protection as I continue to minister to victims of satanic ritual abuse, witchcraft, and those needing deliverance. As before, I need prayer partners to keep me in prayer for this ministry as we push back the darkness of evil in Australia, Kenya, and Mexico. 
Thank you for your prayers. God bless you. On Wednesday, April 17th, I'm going to Kenya, Africa. I have been invited to minister for three days at the Assembly of God in Kisi, Kenya. It is about three hours from Pastor Amos's church. Then Pastor Amos will pick me up so I can minister at his church on Saturday, April 27th. I will perform the wedding ceremony for Pastor Amos and Lynette. For the three Sundays that I am gone, I will do a live broadcast for the 11 a.m. service from Kenya. And I will be doing the Wednesday night Bible study. And the print has done uh, cut off there. But I guess uh, I think I covered the important parts. Uh, I will be returning on May the 8th. God bless you, Pastor Cliff. Bring someone to Christ and to church. And in this we believe the Bible is the inspired and only infallible and authoritative word of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. There is one God, eternal, existent in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, Deuteronomy 6.4 and Matthew 28.19. Yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yeah. For the truth of his word, and as we stand upon the word, and we know this, that faithful is he who promised it, who also perform it. And when God has begun, he's going to complete and accomplish in your life. Praise mm -hmm. God. Praise God. And again, um, Friday night when we had the uh, prayer meeting here, and, then, uh, and one of the things we pray for as I go and minister at the uh, Iron Coffins, and, um, and sometimes I'm there, and all the times I'm there, but it seems like nothing is happening, nothing is developing, not until I'm ready to leave. And then with this one and that one and the other, and I get to talk. And so I end up and it's in it's 45 minutes or an hour later that I was planning on leaving. So, but that, that's okay. But the point is that um, uh, there's an openness that God has. God's bringing that to some people, and I've been able to share and and while I was there, I would pray, pray for one of the members who's there. Um, I forgot to give his, his wife's name, um, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, put Lisa on the prayer list as well. And for her healing, uh, she's in a very uh, weakened condition right now. Um, and it's very hard here for her. So just keep her in prayer. And God will minister in a special way to Lisa and bring the healing that she needs in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Um, and then I was introduced to um, to uh, Larry's uh, friend, and I got to share with her about the Lord and God as well. God, just, God was doing something very, very significant there, so keep Kim in prayer as well. Uh, so somebody open up, lead out in prayer for uh, Larry, um, for his wife, so praying for Lisa, his wife, and then for the lady, Kim, that she will follow through in spiritual things, um, and share the Lord with her. Um, and she knows about the Lord, but she's had some bad things happen to her in the past, and, and the enemy's just trying to hinder her. Um, so pray for Kim. So somebody pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up uh, Larry before you and his wife Lisa, that you'll need to minister to all of their needs. You know everything, Father God, where they need to be blessed, where they need healings, where they need your presence, Lord, in, in each of their hearts, Lord. And uh, for his friend Kim, who's having such a rough time, and being uh, mistreated in the life, Lord, and not being love that she needed to feel. We just pray that she feels your love, Father God. Mm -hmm. Your love, Lord Jesus. There is no love like yours. Mm -hmm. We just pray that you'll overshadow all three of them, Larry, Lisa, and Ken, with your love and your peace and your power and your presence today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right, turn with me in your Bibles to the um, Gospel of Matthew. Um, and this is um, 
the empty tomb part two. Uh, and if it wasn't for the empty tomb, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the empty tomb, there weren't be churches. If it wasn't for the empty tomb, um, that it would just be another man that died. Um, there are three men that died um, that that particular day and late afternoon. Um, but one of them rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. Praise God. And because of his resurrection, we have promises to us. We have blessings to us. And because of his resurrection, there's commands to us. There's direction that God's given us. And we need to listen to those things and follow through um, to be aware. So again, turn with me in your Bibles to um, Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to first look at the beginning of it. Um, that, as it is given here, um, chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. And in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, um, came Mary Magdalene um, and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance, countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake, uh, but, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the, woman, to, to the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which, is, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, and see the place where the Lord laid. Praise God. The announcement by the angel, the Lord is risen. The announcement by the angel of what has taken place. And what's needed and necessary is to understand that because of that empty tomb, there's, there's blessings that are going to come. Because the empty tomb, God has a purpose and plan. Because of the empty tomb, God's working something. And that empty tomb's uh, experience is still a blessing to us today, praise God, as you look to God, trust in God, and believe in God. Now, what we want to look at here is that in this resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, and, and by the way, there are other people that were resurrected too, in uh, fact, that were raptured, that went to, to, went into heaven right then because of what ended up taking place, praise God. Uh, and the tombs were open, praise God, and others as well. So, praise God, that's another message. But here he says um, that he is not here. But they were directed then to go to Jerusalem uh, or to Galilee. And, and the disciples were supposed to be there because Jesus was going to appear to them. And then he gave direction. So now let's look at um, the end of the chapter. Um, and here's the message that the Lord gives. Um, let's look at verse 16 of chapter 28. And look with the message that's coming here. Here's the information. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Now th this is interesting. Jesus sent the message to the uh, women that saw him that he was alive. For the disciples, all right, truck up to a uh, Galilee. Uh, I'm going to meet you there. Now some didn't believe that and believe he was resurrected, but they did go, um, and they went to Galilee because the Lord told them to go to Galilee. <coughs> Be ready. Sometimes God's going to tell you to go somewhere. <coughs> have you to do that. And if he is speaking then to go in a certain direction, what are we to do? Go. Go. Obey. Obey. <coughs> Follow the leading of the Lord. Follow his direction. Um, because there is something that's going to happen when you obey God's direction. Something's going to take place when you respond to what God has. When God speaks to you, then act upon that. When God directs you, act upon that. Again, I mentioned with um, um, Pastor Amos, oh, had called me a long quite a time ago, uh, and then, then he wanted to here and to be able to use the messages on, at his church. Fine, use it. Praise God. It's all it's all from the Word of God. It's all available. Uh, and then meeting with him and uh, meeting with his men. And then he 
he repeatedly, you know, at, inviting me to Africa, inviting me to Kenya. Um, I never had really a desire, nothing against it, to going, but it just never come to me about going to Africa. Um, I mean, I know missionaries have gone to Africa, people have gone to Africa, things have happened there. Um, and so he, he brought it up numerous times, and then one of the times that God said, go to Africa. Wow. See, you can hear something, but it may not be the right time or the right moment, but God arranged the right moment. When he, and see, that's, our, that's an indication of our obedience to God. God's going to call you to do something. It's like, oh, I've never done that before. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Be open to whatever he has for you to do. When he says, go to Africa, then go to Africa. Uh, when he says, um, go to Australia, you go to Australia. And then that opened up as well. Look what God has done. It's because of listening to God. <coughs> and each one of you here and those viewing, there's messages that God's given you. There's direction he's given you. Obey that. See, uh, the, sometimes just God is going to put you to a test. Have you do something to see if you're going to do it. God, When God tests you, he'll never test you or tempt you with sin. He'll never do that. Uh, but he will test you in obedience. Will you do what he says? Will you obey him? And that's what our life needs to be, obedience unto the Lord. So here, the eleven, they went to Galilee, into the mountain, Luke verse 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Wow, here he is in resurrection form. Um, they worshipped Jesus. And listen, when you go and you are obedient to God, that one of the things you need to be doing is worshipping him. Praise God. He directed you to something, then keep worshiping him. He's having you do something, keep worshiping him. Keep all your heart open to God. Love, love God, serve God. Uh, love Jesus and serve Jesus. Be open to all that he has for your life. Praise God. And he wants to fulfill his will in your life. He wants to do something in your life. So it's be obedient. And there's blessings in obedience. Praise God. There's blessing, great blessings in our beings when we do what God's called us to do. And God's favor will be upon us. God's blessing will be upon us. God's blessing will be on your family, on your home, your business, whatever. Obey the Lord. Do what he says to do. Because he always has good in form for you. Uh, and Jeremiah 29 says, I know the thoughts and plans I have towards you. Plans of good, not of evil, to show you an expected end. God wants to show you something. Jeremiah, uh, it, it, it says, uh, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Hallelujah. When God calls, respond to the call. When God is speaking, listen to the word. Listen to what he has for you, what he wants to do in your life. Now here, they came together, but some doubted. How in the world could that happen? That here, Jesus is resurrection form and he, he's talking to them. And yet they doubt. And doubt is fear here. Doubt is, is, a, is an issue. The devil is always wanting you to doubt. Doubt your, yourself, doubt your work, doubt your direction, and anything else. Uh, even though some they all obeyed and went to Galilee, but even then, in, our, in their obedience, they doubted. That, you know what? Sometimes in our obedience, we're still doubting God. What you need to do is repent. Say, oh God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm going to stop doubting. Now, as I mentioned before, there's only one time it's permissible to doubt. Doubt your doubts, but never doubt your faith. You can doubt your doubts, but don't doubt your faith. And look to God, trust God, and believe God. And so, so now, even though there were some that were there that did not believe, uh, they had difficulty there, but Jesus came and spoke unto them. Now look what he said unto them. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now the word power here in, in, in the, the Greek means authority. Um, it, it speaks of jurisdiction. It, it speaks of given permission uh, to them. So he has given, was given this authority. 
uh, and this direction here. And now out of that authority, he's speaking. Now he's speaking something directly to them. Now be, they got, they were there because uh, the the women that, that that saw Jesus said, Jesus said, go to Galilee. So they obeyed because somebody else said it. But now they need to obey because Jesus says it directly to them. And please note this, God is going to have a direct word for every one of you. God will have a direct word for each one of us. God has a plan for our life. Praise God. It may change. It may be different than what we thought or we even expected. But the key is be open to God, whatever he has. Now, he has, he says, all power and authority is given unto me. And, and so now he's speaking this. And here's what he said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Or another, another translation, go and make disciples. Hallelujah. All right. You are a disciple. Now you go make other disciples. There's a challenge that God's given us. There's a challenge. We need to share the word of God. We need to bless uh, people with the word of God. We need to speak those things. Just like Friday night we're sharing. And this lady who was in so much distress. And, um, and then I was able to, to share the gospel with. And, and she said, well, no, I've been too bad. And, you know, uh, God won't forgive me. Yes, yes, he will. Based on the word of God, God will forgive you. See, uh, and people have to be reminded of the word of God. Because the devil will bring such condemnation upon you and such um, even damnation against you. And, and you have to just rebuke that in Jesus' name. You have to cast that off in Jesus' name. Because that's not what God has. That's not what God's plan is. He has a plan, a blessing for you. His plan and direction in your life. So be open to that. So here he says, go and make disciples. So that means you are to leave they were to leave where they're at and go and minister to somebody. Go and share the word of God. Go and preach the gospel. Um, but you say, well, but I, I, I'm not a preacher. That, that doesn't matter. Just go and share Jesus. Just share Jesus. Share Jesus. Share Jesus with those around about you. Whether it's family members or friends or even total strangers. Share Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Be open to Jesus. Let Jesus guide you and direct you. And you open yourself to that. And whoa, what a blessing that comes here as you respond to that. Praise God. So the challenge was go and make disciples. Go and you teach something. You, you, you share with them. You minister to them. You comfort them. You bless them. You guide them uh, in the word of God. And speak forth that word and how great that is. And then he says that not only are you to make disciples. Now... He, he didn't say go and make converts. So go make a disciple. And a disciple is a student, is a learner. It's somebody that is uh, uh, studious and who will search the scriptures, who will evaluate it, look at it, listen to what you have to say. Take in the word of God. Take it in. Be open to it. Um, respond to it. Um, yield yourself to the word of God. Uh, it may be something different than you've done. You may... You may direct you in a way you haven't gone before. Praise the Lord anyway, but be open to what God has and speak the word of life. Speak the blessing, the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and have no sorrow. So then he says, go and make disciples of all nations. Then he says, and then baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so there is a, in discipleship, in which I'm continuing to do on, on Wednesday night, uh, for the next two Wednesday nights until I leave, uh, and to understand this matter of discipleship. It's to be a learner, a st student of the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved of a, a, a righteous man, a righteous woman, that you don't need to be ashamed to handle the Word of Truth. Praise God. Because you're studying it, you're looking at it, and, and God will bless you in it. And God will bless it to you to give it to somebody else. Praise God. And let this truth prevail in a special way. So then, then he says that in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I've commanded you. So what you are to do when you are going and make a disciple, teach them the word of God. Teach them, here's what the word of God says. You may think something, you may believe something, but does your belief line up with the word of God? Um, uh, See, it was uh, Thursday night. Um, I was invited, went to um, 
Pastor um, Matt's church in, um, in Detroit, Metro Life. Um, and then there was a, uh, an invitation in, um, that, that he and some people in the church were invited to go to a, a soccer game that's in Canton. I've never, I've never watched a soccer game in my life. But I, I, and the video and new scene or something saw like, you know, 15 seconds or something. And I've like never seen a whole soccer game. And so they're going, driving from Detroit to go over to Canton for this soccer game. So while I was there, then we're, some were talking. And then, then one of the brothers, who was a Christian brother, um, who's, who attends Pastor Matt's church, then he brought up something. Um, as if it was a truth. And tr there's like five people there. And and he said that the Bible says something, and what he said was false. The Bible doesn't say that. Um, and so I immediately challenged that, and I immediately you know, spoke up about that. Um, and then it was like it was a shock and surprise to that. And then, then after I, I, I shared... And I defined the issue, and from because I already studied the scriptures about it, and, and and so I'm giving them what the Bible has to say. Well, one particular translation had a word in there that that was it was trying to make the gospel a little more clear, and they went too far with it. Um, so so I corrected him on that and why it happened. And then he publicly, so there's like these six, seven other people there, and, and, he, and he says, I stand corrected. I stand mm -hmm. corrected. I, I receive that. And that's, because now he won't teach that thing. See, there's always an opportunity for you to teach what the Word of God says. Yeah. Now, people have their opinion, but we're not to be giving our opinions. Right. That's right. It's to give the Word of God. Right. This is the Word of life. This is the word of life that's given to us. This is what we need to stand on and believe in and call upon. All right? So, so he challenges them, and he says, teaching them to observe all things where, and whatever I've commanded you. So whatever Jesus spoke to them, they are to speak. And for you and I, whatever the Lord gives to you and me, well, whatever has been uh, made available to us, then we're to do the same thing. We're to... And we're commanded to speak these things. We're commanded to share these things. We're commanded to, uh, to make it known to others. Uh, they need the word of truth. They need the word of truth. And you may be the only one able to give it. You may be the only one able to share it. Uh, like this lady, um, like Kim, um, met Friday night. Um, and and she, she feels so, that she failed God so miserably, so bad, so terrible um, in, in the situation. And so uh, that there's no hope for her. That's all yes, there is. Based on the word of God, yes. He says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise and if we have sins, well, what are we to do? Confess oh, our yes. sins. For he's the one that's faithful and just to forgive us. Hallelujah. Thank Praise God. God. It's God. the word of God. Amen. Now, she, she felt like she could never be forgiven. Well, that's not true. You may have that feeling, but don't believe their feelings. Your feelings will mislead you. Your feelings will misguide you. Your feelings will, will lead you in a wrong direction. But stand on the Word of God. Live by the Word of God. Trust in the Word of God. Be open to the Word of God. For what God has, what God is doing and will continue to do. This is the Word of life. This is the Word of life. And so he's, so Jesus challenges us in His resurrection form. One of the things, and, and, and here is something also to know. The one thing that Jesus did more than anything else is teaching. Teaching the Word of God. When he was a young boy, he went back to the temple. What was he doing? He was, teach, he was teaching the, the scribes and the Pharisees. He was teaching the religious leaders. What was he doing in his life? Teaching. What was he doing on the cross of Calvary? He was still teaching. Teaching the word of God. Hallelujah. Giving the word of God. And when he was resurrected, and then for the 40 days then, he's still teaching. Hallelujah. The teaching ministry of giving the word of God. And that's what we're all called to do. Whatever he has commanded us to do, do it. Hallelujah. And he says that, 
teaching them to observe all things whatever I've commanded you. And then he makes this promise. And lo, I'm with you always, even in the end of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So here, so wherever you go to teach, he's there with you. Praise God. Wherever you're in ministry, he's there with you. Wherever, whatever's come up, he will lead you in this hallelujah. Praise God. And what the Lord wants to do in work and get faith in your life. And continue on with this theme. Look with me in the, the Gospel of Mark um, in chapter 16. Again, this is, now Mark, we, we heard Matthew uh, share. Now look what Mark shares about this thing, about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, that he's not there in the empty tomb. And and that that is to give us impetus to move in the direction of God, to do what God has, to uh, respond to the will of God, to look to God. So let, let's uh, pick it up at uh, verse uh, 14. Uh, of Mark chapter 16. And afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. So in his resurrection form, now, now he's he's challenging them, he's correcting them, um, he is having to deal with some issues in their life. Um, so and and he 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 challenges their unbelief. He speaks to them. Uh, you're not. You're not believing. They've been talked with him and gone with him, but they weren't believing. They let emotion get in their way, and that's what the devil will use in your life. To let emotions get in your way. Feelings come that may be negative. Feelings may come that may be uh, bringing doubt, uh, doubt on the word of God, doubt on your faith and down in your Christian life and living. Cast it down. Rebuke it. Renounce it in Jesus' name. No. Uh, don't let that happen. Here, these were his disciples. They were actually with Jesus. But they doubted. And, and he speaks to them that they had unbelief and hardness of heart. That means they were stubborn. That means they were uh, even to the point of well, I'm just not going to believe this. I don't accept this. Um, and they're coming against even the thing that they're seeing, the fact that they're seeing Jesus in resurrection form. So he had to challenge them. And there are people in the churches today, and people watching too, that that you, you, you think you know it all, that you, you don't have to do something, but the Word of God says, no, here's what you need to do. Um, and... And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Uh, and praise God that we're on the internet, and on YouTube, and for those that view it, praise God. But that is to be no substitute for coming together as the body of Christ. And everyone said, Amen. that's right. See, don't let that keep you from fellowshipping with other saints. Don't let, that, don't let anything keep you from coming together. The church needs to come together. That in this time coming together... Uh, not only from the enjoyment of the praise and worship and speaking the word of God, but just the fact that the body of Christ can be together. Hallelujah. Then there's power that will be there. The Spirit of God will move. The Spirit of God will do something. And He wants to show Himself to be mighty in your midst. Praise God. He wants to work in your life. He wants to challenge you, uh, guide you, direct you. Praise God. And, and no matter what God's doing in around about, you, you, you may not be a... You may not recognize it's God, but just be open to God. The more you're open to God, the more you're going to recognize God's doing something. God's in charge. God's blessing. God is guiding. The Lord is doing something wonderful. So, so he challenged them. Um, now look at verse 15. And now here's what, he's, what Mark is saying in Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go. He said, you, you have truth, now give the truth. You have to, you have an opportunity to speak this to somebody else. So he's telling them, don't just stay in there in one spot, but go out and spread the good news. Hallelujah. Go out and give the word of God, give the word of life to, to those that need it. Go out and yield. Um, yield yourself. Put yourself in a, in a situation where you can 
speak the word of God to somebody. Mm -hmm. And just pray who God will have you to speak, who God will have you to minister to, who God will have you to give a word in due season. Because they need the word of God. They need Amen. the word of life. And as for you and for me to respond to that, to be open to what God has, what God's will is in your life. Um, that whether you are going to the grocery store, or going to the um, uh, beauty salon, or wherever you go, look for an opportunity to share Jesus Christ. Yes. Look for an opportunity to, to bless somebody. Praise God. Look for the opportunity to, uh, to minister life and peace there. So he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, <clears throat> the preaching of the gospel is declaring the good news. Jesus is alive, and Jesus will forgive you your sins. Jesus will work his work. Jesus will minister life and peace to you. Jesus will fulfill his will in your life. Jesus will cause something of blessing to come to you. Jesus will minister uh, strength and power. Jesus will bring forth his love and grace in your life. Praise God. No matter what's going on. No matter what's going on. He will do something to bring strength and peace and power in your life. Praise God. And he will manifest his life in you as you receive this, as you open up yourself to that. And then he says, and that, now look at verse 16. He says, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So now he's given it. So, you need to be a believer, and if you are a believer, you will be baptized. You will uh, be baptized, and what he says, <coughs> baptized in water, and what that is, that you're 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 declaring publicly, yes. I've committed myself to Jesus Christ, yes. uh, and letting everybody else know I'm a believer. Praise God yes. by being baptized in water. Yes. Praise God. That's giving your testimony. That's giving your life as a. Um, as a witness and testimony to those around about. Um, on, um, on Tuesday night, I was introduced to, to a young man named Abraham, and he's from Uganda. And what happened there was that uh, his mother, and in Uganda is, is mostly all Muslim, um, and, and his mother was Muslim, but somehow, she got saved. She gave her life to Jesus Christ. Well, it came against her, um, and she lost her family. Um, but one of her sons, Abraham, he accepted the Lord as his Savior as well. So he rejected um, the, the religion of the nation. And, and he re rejected he determined he was no longer going to be a Muslim. He was going to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Well, when that finally got out and it was known, uh, and there is a law that anybody that leaves being a Muslim uh, converts to something else, you kill them. You kill them. They're not going to be that. You kill them. And so at a point, they did this. They went and they beat him up and they... Uh, came against him um, and he and left him for dead. Praise God, he didn't die. They took him to the hospital. He took him to the hospital. And he recuperated, um, and now he's sharing his testimony, Jesus Christ. Here, we're not yet. I've done yet. So come here. There's already things coming against Christianity. Our nation has been turned, being turned around by evil men and women who believe things that are not of God, not the word of God. And, and more and more rights are taken away from Christians and believers. Uh, and even our own government is gonna, gonna file some things against us. Um, there's already threats of taking away the, uh, the for churches to be uh, not be taxed. Um, and some, some cities are, working on doing that. And the government is considering it too. Well, once that happens, it's going to be hard. It's hard enough as it is. But we're going to be challenged. There's going to be people are going to, um, because they believe in Jesus Christ, um, then you're not going to be able to work at certain places. You're not going to be, and you, you're, right now, 
You are not allowed. If you are in any business, a business can tell you, you cannot share about Jesus on company time. You may be a Christian, but you can't do that. Uh, and and in, even in uh, counselors who are trying to help people, they counselors who have been, they got their degrees through the, through the education, uh, and they are told, you cannot talk about Jesus. You cannot. Now, even if the person initiates it, you can listen to what they have to say, but you can't join in with that. That's happening. That's happening. Um, it's already taking place. Um, their hands are being tied. Their mouth is being taped. You cannot speak about Jesus. Um, wow, how tragic that is. Um, but it's going to get worse. But here, do know this. Those that will be obedient to God and speak the things of God, God's going to bless. He'll do that. He'll do that. We may have our time, but God's going to make a way for us. So in the midst of it, we've got to keep going. So it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Those that choose not to believe in Jesus Christ, they bring upon themselves their own damnation. Amen. Now, what we're trying to do is share the blessing of God so they won't be damned, so they won't, won't go to hell. Uh, and so they come to know Jesus and have a Jesus moment, Jesus experience, and come to the reality of Christ in them, the hope of glory. Now look at verse, verse 17. So those that, this is what Jesus said, those that are taught uh, and are baptized and believe and are baptized, and then he says in verse 17, and the sign shall follow them that what? Believe. believe. Believe what? Believe the word of God. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the things that he has. And there will be signs following. Now, how is it that people will come to a point of believing? We've got to go and preach the gospel. Now, so we try to do various things and, and have unbelievers come to church, but... As you see, there are not very many unbelievers willing to go to church. So the church needs to go out where they are. <coughs> church needs to go and in the highways and the byways and go uh, and, and talk to somebody else about Jesus. And then, then when there's an interest, in, you know, then they'll come. So, but we've got to do something to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we've got to speak yes. the word of God. Uh, look what it says, though. And if we are preaching the word, number one, and... There is believe people are believing number two, then what does the word say is going to happen? Signs and wonders will follow. Praise God. Signs and wonders will follow them that believe. Oh. We haven't been seeing very many signs and wonders, have we? Amen or oh me at that point. Yeah. So what you need to do, what we need to do. As we need to believe this word totally and completely. And if we will believe, if you will believe, you that are here, you viewing, if you will believe, there will be signs and wonders. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Friday night again, as I was praying for, for Larry, um, who's going to have a hard time about his wife, but I got to pray for him. And it's, uh, it's like something changed in his confidence, something changed. I was able to pray with him, pray for him, praise God. Hallelujah. See, somebody needs somebody else to share with him. So and, and he was feeling better, praise God. And see, that God wants to use you to touch somebody. God wants to use you to share the gospel. God wants you to use you to, to minister life there. Um, and God will bring blessing and comfort, praise God. So it says here that there will be signs and wonders that will come because we believe, praise God, that we will see these things happen. We'll see these things. There was a uh, testimony um, of a group that went down to Mexico, a youth group, um, and then they, 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 they were at the group that went down there across the border, and they, the first town that they came to, I forgot the name of the town, uh, so they got out of the bus and said, all right, now we should go two by two in here in this little village, and then share Jesus. Whoever you come to see, share Jesus. Walk coming down the street, share Jesus. 
well, these two girls were walking and hadn't seen anybody yet, so they see off in the distance, there's this man um, who was uh, by a tree, sitting on the ground, back against the tree, um, and, and the man, I forget which hand it was, but he had a crippled hand, and his fingers were kind of like, like this, um, holding his, to his chest, and he's just sitting there um, in the shade. And so these two girls went up to him and started sharing about Jesus. Um, do you know Jesus? Well, well, he, well, one of the things is, well, I'm Catholic. Well, there's a lot of Catholics that don't know Jesus. And so, well, I'm Catholic, and, and well, we want to share Jesus with you. So they shared the scriptures and shared, and, and, and they said one of the things that Jesus does not only is to save people, but he heals them. Whatever malady they have, whatever disease or condition they have. And he said, um, we want to pray for you for your healing of your hand. Because he, he really, because of this, he can't work job, so he's more like a beggar um, and just having a hard time in life. And he, they talked about Jesus and he accepted Jesus. And so he said, now we want to pray for you and pray for your healing. And, and so, and they asked him, well, do you believe? And he said, well, if that's what God's word says, and they said, if that's what God's word says, and so they shared some scriptures in, um, in, in Matthew 4, and Matthew 8, uh, that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the sin of God, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and what? And healing all who were sick. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. That's in the Word of God. So when we go, go with the Word of God. Go with the teaching of the Word of God. So they said, well, the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mm -hmm. So we're going to lay hands on you and you're going to recover. So here's what they did. So they laid hands on them. In this one girl, um, and usually what we tend to do is when we pray for somebody, we close our eyes. Uh, <coughs> We, I, I, I think we think that that's something super, super special that we have to close our eyes when we pray. You don't have to close your eyes when you pray. But they, uh, the Bible also says watch and pray, so I like to watch and see what's going to happen. Uh, I don't want to miss. I'm praying, so I don't want to miss anything here. So, so I'm going to watch and pray, too. So, so the one girl was doing that, and then they were praying, and then the one girl touched, he just touched his hand somewhere, and then, then the man's and they, while they're praying and still praying, and she saw him move his wrist. Uh, and then, one by one, his finger opened up. Praise God. He had tears in his eyes. And then he raised his hand. He's wiggling his fingers. He hadn't done it for years. Now, when you're in that condition, and, and, and your, your hand has been there, uh, it gets so stiff. You can't even force it open. You can't make it happen. Yeah. But the healing took place. And the one girl starts screaming, Hallelujah! Praise God! Hallelujah! Uh, she's jumping for joy! Hallelujah! Praise God! The others look into it. Then they saw he was totally healed. Praise God. Signs and wonders will follow them that what? Believe. 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 Now, we haven't been seeing very many signs and wonders. <laughs> So, that means we're not believing enough. Now, uh, love say amen or oh me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. So, we need to believe for healing. We need to believe God for healing. Um, I've been kind oh, I've got to um, pray for uh, uh, Samen, S A M A N, in uh, Pakistan. I received this contact from this lady in Pakistan, um, and she's going through a hard time. Her uh, um, her husband was an uh, a, uh, alcoholic, and he's a psychopath. Um, she's separated from him and in the process of divorce. Uh, and here she's got two children, but her daughter, her eight year old daughter, whose name is uh, Hosanna, for her name, eight years old. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of her um, so we can continue to pray for Hosanna. 
and that and then Hosanna has tuberculosis. And so the mother had to, she lost her job because she had to stay home to take care of her daughter. So so she she on the internet, found me on the internet, praise God. God's using it to go to for other people to reach the gospel, reach something. And so she contacted me and you'll pray for my daughter. So I've been praying for her. And then then I read the scriptures. I got uh, the 12 scriptures I have on healing and minister the word of God and healing. Praise God. Pray for her. Um, and, and then in contact with her and pray for blessing upon her, the mother as well as the daughter. Praise God. So at every opportunity, share the word of God. Speak the word of God. Um, I, I, I sent a, um, a message, a, sent a, a text, a messenger to somebody else who's going through some things. So I I quoted the, all the, these scriptures on healing. Praise God. He, and I, I'm seemingly ministering to more people um, through the internet than uh, people around here. God's opened up this door. So, so here, awesome. and we can see things and believe things. And she's been encouraged. And, and it's been a blessing to her. And so I gave her these... Um, at, and I sent her the list of scriptures first. I read all the scriptures there. Um, and one of my favorite ones there is in Proverbs, chapter 4, verse uh, 20 through 22. My son attended to my words, and climb then you into my sayings. Let them not depart from thy heart, but keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are what? Life unto those that find them. That's spiritual life. You, you receive spiritual life. And it says, and then it is health to all your flesh. That word health in the Hebrew is the word marpe, M-A-P-A-R, P-A, marpe, which means health, medicine, cure today. Ah, oh, you mean God's word is medicine? I don't like taking medicine. Tough, take the word of God. Tough, take the word of God. The word of God is medicine. You need a good dose of it. Keep on taking it, hallelujah. Keep on taking it. Uh, respond to the Word of God. Let the Word of God enrich your life and heart. Let the Word of God touch you. Praise God. Uh, so I shared these scriptures with her. And and so and I sent her the whole list of them. And now, now I said, you need to pray these scriptures every day over your daughter. Praise God. And I prayed these scriptures to her, over her, in Jesus' name. And it says, signs and wonders will follow. It's not what I said. That's what Jesus said. Wow. It's in red. It's in red. I mean, he, he said these words himself. So if Jesus said it, do it. Praise God. See, your obedience is directed here. Respond to what the Lord has. Respond the way the Lord has it for you. Um, and so he says, In these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongue. And in the name of Jesus Christ... And we, we can come against demonic forces, demonic powers. We can come against the evil that's plaguing people, that's uh, hindering people. Stand on the Word of God. Live by the Word of God. Act on the Word of God. Know that the Word of God is true. And there will be, you'll have authority over the devil and demons. And, and you will speak a new tongue. God will give you a heavenly language. Praise God. That's what's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Later on, your uh, fifty days after after the Passover, after Christ was resurrected from the dead, he for forty days he ministers to them. Then on the fiftieth day, um, Pentecost Sunday, uh, that's when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came forth, and they all spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <coughs> Hallelujah! Praise God. God wants anointing and blessing. <coughs> praise God. Um, and then he says, and then they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any dead thing, it shall not harm them, and it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Uh, I, I shared with you that when I came back, when I was in Africa, uh, the last time I, I had to get a shot for yellow fever, so I had that, um, um, to uh, a lot. Of, in order to enter the country, I had to do that. Okay? So then... Um, but when I got there, the second day I was there, I got bit by a mosquito. And I knew this one flying around, swatted at it a couple times, didn't, didn't kill it, but then 
about finally got me. And it got me right in the, on my, on my wrist bone here. And as soon as I saw it, and it, it look, when you get a mosquito bite, it swells up a little bit. You see the little hole that, in the name of Jesus, I come against you. You'll have no power over me, and you cannot hinder me. I will have no effect by this in Jesus' name. Well, and I removed it, and just maybe, maybe an hour or two later, <clears throat> that bump was gone. But when I was in the hospital, found out I had dengue disease. You get that by being bit by mosquito. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I was there in my room, I was put in isolation, there was nobody else in my room. And and nurses not only had to have masks, hair cover, covering their head, a uh, gown, um, and covering to see me. Uh, because that can be contagious. Mm -hmm. So they asked me how I felt. I said, I feel wonderful. I had no effects from Praise the God. disease. Praise God. No side effects. It, I got bit by the mosquito, but I rebuked it in Jesus' name. And there was no results of that. I had other issues, but there's no results from that. Praise God. And I'm believing that. I'm going back there again. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And, they're, and, and, and Pastor Amos said that they're having a... When I was there, it was the rainy season, but it seemed to be extended. There's more rain. They're getting so much rain here, and, and it's becoming very serious. And because of all the rain that has come, it has had a devastating effect on the economy as well. That's been bad. Um, so it, 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 you know, gas prices have gone up there, um, and so there have been other issues. But God's going to make a way anyway. God's going to make a way anyway. And so... So, going with the gospel, spreading the good news, God will make a way. And says that they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise God. Now, to recover means a gradual improvement. Um, there's a ministry gifts of healing. There's an instantaneous thing that happens there. Uh, but we can still pray and lay hands on people, and there's going to be a gradual improvement, gradual change in their life. Um, so that's what we need to do, is share the Word of God and believe God for healing. Touch God. Touch the heart of God by you having faith in God and faith in the Word of God. And you're going to see things happen. So then he goes on, verse, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. <coughs> now he's at the right hand of authority. He's at the right hand of God. Um, that's his spiritual position um, with God the Father. Now, and then he says here, and then verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with what? Signs, Signs following. Oh, wow. They were obedient. That's what we're called to do is be obedient. And when you are obedient... To the Word of God and the things of God and the Spirit of God, there's going to be signs and wonders that are going to follow. God's calling us to follow His Word, His will. God's calling you, every one of you, not only those here, but you viewing on, um, on Facebook Live and YouTube, that God has something He wants to do in the world of your life. Be open to it, yield yourself to it, um, and, and just just believe. Believe God to minister. Believe God to work. Believe that a miracle will take place. And you will see miracles. Believe and expect miracles. Um, and <clears throat> see that the hand of God will work in your life. Don't let anything or anyone stop you in Jesus' name. But it comes down to believing. Jesus ministered to the man and, and, and he said, that all things are possible to them that what? Believe. And the man's prayer was, Lord, I believe, but help out my unbelief. We believe, at least to begin with. But the unbelief, it seems to be stronger than the believing. But the more you believe, the stronger you're going to be. The more you believe, the more you're going to receive in Jesus' name. Let's stand as we close in prayer.
and this challenge to each one of us is to believe the Lord as we follow the Lord and serve the Lord and honor the Lord and know that, that God wants to work his works. God wants to manifest his, himself in your life. God wants to show forth his power and might, his glory and his grace in the name of Jesus Christ. And so it's believe the word. Believe the word of God. Believe what he has. Believe what he's calling you to do. Believe the will of God to be accomplished in your life. Uh, and in the will of God, always in the will of God, there's a challenge for us. Go. Where do I go? Well, I'm going to let you know. Let's start going. It means stop just sitting around and just uh, hope that something would get better, hope that something would change. But he wants to use you uh, to bless you. So go and share the word of God. Go and speak the word of God. Go and bless others with the word of God. Bless them and help them to know the word of God and grow in this in Jesus' name. And you'll see the things of God in Jesus' name. Praise God. And so there's, it's for each one of us, because the tomb is empty, God has given us a challenge to walk in obedience. To walk in obedience. And a long time ago, a long time ago, I told God, I'll go where you want me to go, do what you want me to do, and say what you want me to say. Now, sometimes I have said some things to some individuals, and they didn't like them. And became angry with me, angry at me. Uh, in fact, I was even threatened by the one thing I said. It was the truth. They needed to hear it. But they didn't like it. Came against me. Person wouldn't speak to me for a year and a half. Uh, that's, that's their problem. Uh, I gave them the truth. Um, I'm, I'm not here or any place to appease people. I'm here to please God. And, and if I'm teaching what the Word of God says, and people become offended by it, then that's their issue. Then they're going to have to deal with God. And God will deal with them. But what we're to do is stand on the Word of God. Not be arrogant, not be not beat them over the head with a Bible type thing. Uh, you know, thanks. Uh, but no, we've got to share the Word of God with love and truth. In Jesus' name. And Jesus said what? I am the way the truth and the life. Praise God. And that's what we're to do, is share that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Share that message. Share that with people. <laughs> they need to hear it. Uh, but they may not like it. Well, it's tough. They need to hear it anyway. They need to hear it anyway. And it's only as you and I stand on the Word of God and we're going to see the results of it, the benefits of it, the blessings. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, here we are. We stand before you. Uh, those here in the sanctuary, those viewing on uh, Facebook Live and YouTube, God, that you'll just help them to receive this word and know that that because of the empty tomb, that miracles will come. And and, and as people will believe, there will be signs and wonders that follow those that believe. Help us, Lord, to believe even yes. more than we have. Help us that where we lack, oh God, that we'll step forward in these things in Jesus' name. That the glory of God, the peace of God, the power of God, the Spirit of God will move in a way that's needed in our life. And for these things, we give you praise. For these things, we give you honor. For these things, we give you thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And knowing this, that faithful are you who promised it and also perform it in Jesus' name. So help us, O oh God, that we'll step forward in these things and, and do what you call us to do and go into all the world and make disciples. And we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we can declare the good news of Jesus Christ and the love of God. And we'll give you the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 <coughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise you may be seated. And I meant to take the offering before the message, but I forgot. Um, um, and, and this again is Mission Sunday. Um, and, and we are. It's a reminder that we are supporting um, the four children uh, that are were orphans. So Pastor Amos, who already had four children, took them in and uh, 
my greatest prayer is for Lynette. Now she all of a sudden has eight kids to take care of. Um, and, and she just loves it. She just loves it. Um, she's such a loving lady. A woman of God. True, true woman of God. But um, Pastor Amos and Lynette need help. They need help um, financially um, so that I can send a, a, a check back and what I do is I send it by um, uh, um, oh, Western Union. Western Union, yes, yeah, thank you. And um, and so then we, we, we get it immediately. Um, so that's what we need to do. And so we, we need to give a good offering. And, and so since it's the first Sunday of the month, now we only have um, we don't take a benevolence offering on the first Sunday. We do it every other day, every other Sunday, but. But all cash, all cash is is designated for permissions, and we really do that. And sometimes it had not enough has really come in, and had to supplement that. Um, but we need to really do this to to stand tight and strong here, and to follow through with giving in a special way to see um, for these uh, four uh, orphans. Uh, but now they've adopted them, and so. Um, and since Pastor Amos um, and Lynette have adopted me as dad, so that means they're my grandkids. So help me take care of my grandkids. <laughs> as we give the blessing in Jesus' name. And that God will work a miracle that's needed and necessary. And so I speak to the Lord to bless you, the Lord to keep you, the Lord to make you the Lord to make his face to shine upon you and give you rest and peace in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Okay, Aaron, would you? Uh, and then as we uh, continue this, and then, yeah, go ahead. Um, and then we have a, a special birthday. We have a birthday lady here. Yay! Here is Debbie. Debbie, yeah, come forward. Cool. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, God bless you. Oh, praise your husband. But knowing he's in heaven with you, oh God. And that that because she's still here, that means God's not done with her. That he has a work for her yet to do. Um, ministry yet to accomplish. And she's been doing it with her mother or at least that happened to be in the hospital, but I mean, you just continue to use her for your glory and honor. And she gives testimony and witness of the favor of God and the blessing of God. Now, Lord, may this year be her best year ever, that she'll grow in grace and knowledge, walk in the things of your spirit. Lord, be led by you and what you have for her. Touch her in body, mind, and spirit. Relieve every malady and condition physically that's, that's against her and things that have been a hindrance to her. And devil, we command you, back off and back away. You have no authority here in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, may your peace, grace, mercy, and love overshadow her, fulfilling what's needed and necessary in her life and heart. And for these things, we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 That, come on up. Come on up. I've got to have you come up. But, oh, we want to be asking happy birthday to her. Okay. And it looks like a delicious chocolate cake back there. Uh, yes. Your yes. Yes. And, I mean, this is the first time I've ever gotten an all chocolate cake. Uh, so I went there. I went there and says, "Get me, get me." And so, so I got this chocolate cake, and then no, and then I remember she really likes chocolate. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Debbie. Happy birthday to you. Hope you live to be a hundred years old. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you so much. You're all a blessing to me. A huge blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah.